And continuing on from the episode three of the Savages Retrospectives, William Hartnell biography. Hartnell later revealed that he took the role because it led him away from the gruff military parts in which he had become typecast, and having two grandchildren of his own, he came to relish particularly the attention and affection that playing the character brought him from children. His first episode of Doctor Who aired on the 23rd of November 1963. Doctor Who earned Hartnell a regular salary of £315 an episode by 1966, in the era of 48 weeks per year production on the series, equivalent to £6,243 in 2021. By comparison, in 1966, his co-stars Enoch Wills and Michael Craze were earning £68 and £52 per episode at the same time, respectively. Throughout his tenure as the Doctor, Hartnell wore a wig when playing the part, as the character had long hair. I never really thought about that, but yeah, okay, yeah, of course, I guess. Hartnell described his character, the Doctor, as a wizard, and a cross between the Wizard of Oz and Father Christmas. According to William Russell, Hartnell deliberately became occasionally tongue-tied and stumbled over words. According to some of his colleagues on Doctor Who, Hartnell could be a difficult person to work with, though others, Russell and Peter Purvis, and the producer Lambert, spoke glowingly of him. Among the more caustic accounts, Nicholas Courtney and Wills have accused Hartnell of being racist or anti-Semitic. According to his granddaughter Jessica Carney, who wrote his biography, Hartnell could be very bigoted and often came out with xenophobic comments, but all those loudly expressed opinions were contradicted by his behaviour on a personal level. Hartnell adored Carol Ann Ford and Lambert, both Jewish, and had great respect for Hussein, who is Indian. According to Val Speyer, although Hartnell claimed not to like foreigners, as one of his greatest friends on the show was half Greek and half Maltese, I didn't see how this could figure. However, if he liked someone, they weren't a foreigner, they were a friend. Hartnell's deteriorating health, he suffered from undiagnosed arterio sclerosis began to affect his ability to learn his lines if the problem increasing as his time on the series progressed in addition he had a poor relationship with a new production team on the series following the departure of lambert he left doctor who in 1966 when he departed the producer of the show came up with the idea that since the doctor is an alien he could transform himself physically thereby renewing himself hartnell suggested the actor who should play the new doctor stating there's only one man in england who can take over and that's patrick Troughton." In the fourth episode of the serial, The Tenth Planet, the first Doctor regenerates into Troughton's second Doctor. Hartnell reprised the role of the Doctor in Doctor Who during the tenth anniversary story of the Three Doctors, 1972 to 1973. When Hartnell's wife, Heather, found out about his planned involvement, she informed the show's crew that his failing memory and weakening health would prevent him from starring in the special. An agreement was made between the crew and Heather that Hartnell would sit down during the shoot and read his lines from cue cards. His appearance in the story was his final piece of work as an actor due to his declining health. Many of Hartnell's episodes are missing from the archives as a result of the then-standard practice of discarding old shows. Hartnell was married to Heather McIntyre from the 9th of May 1929 until his death. They had a daughter, Heather Ann, and two grandchildren. After living at 51 Church Street, Isleworth, next door to Hugh Blaker, the Hartnells lived on Thames Titten Island. Then in the 1960s, they moved to a cottage in Mayfield, Sussex. They lived in later life at Sheephurst Lane in Marden, Kent. Heather Hartnell died in 1984. Hartnell's health had worsened during the early 1970s, and in December 1974, he was admitted to hospital permanently. In early 1975, he suffered a series of strokes brought on by cerebrovascular disease, and he died in his sleep in hospital from heart failure on the 23rd of April 1975 at the age of 67. The only published biography of him is by his granddaughter, Judith Jessica Carney, entitled Who's There? The Life and Career of William Hartnell. It was first published in 1996 by Virgin Publishing. To mark the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, Carney, with Phantom Publishing, revised and republished the book in 2013. For the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who in 2013, the BBC broadcast an adventure in space and time, a dramatisation of the events surrounding the creation of the series, which featured David Bradley portraying Hartnell. David Bradley, he's, that's what, that's Walter, Walter Frey. A blue plaque marking Hartnell's work in film and television was unveiled at Ealing Studios by Carney on the 14th of October 2018. And that's all there is for today. Sorry if I bored anyone, although there's not much to say here about the savages. I mean, the production design is is decent enough based on the telly snaps. The storyline is, is okay over, man, this would have been much better as a free-parter where they got all the action done rather than one of these meandering 
um, you know, issue reissues of science fiction tropes and the whole, you know, doctor in another body thing. It's a gimmick which is just kind of annoying and eh, not that fun and interesting to me. I don't know. The Savages overall, I actually find to be one of the weaker of the first Doctor serials. It's just, I don't think it's very interesting. At least it, it tries to be one of the more sci-fi oriented of the serials thus far. This is the era we're in. In a slowly tried to remove the historical serials, so I just think it's a good thing. This show's better for that. Other shows can do the historical drama thing. I, I know they could do multiple in the. <clears throat> unless they're going to be an anachronistic or like the Time Meddler or Daleks on the Mary Celeste. I don't really. I don't find it as interesting, you know. Buffalo Miss Eve is about as good as it gets, perhaps. Anyway, all well, the Highlanders coming up, actually, Jamie McCrimmon. But no, the. The, the inner Sloyd era really beginning here, and yet I don't think it's overly strong. Lee Stevens departure is sad. It's. it's Peter Perfis is a pretty good actor for what it's worth, and yeah, Stephen Taylor, not the most interesting companion, although he's a, a performed charismatically, I would say. Well, tune in for the next serial, which will be one of the best of the first Doctors, one of the three or five best, The War Machines. This is good stuff, so stay tuned.